someone dumped oil in that filter while it was sitting in here too without taking it out. Oh Lord. fix some of the stumble issues and maybe some of the check engine light issues um, first thing we did is air filter can in never changed that does not mean you're not supposed to clean it and treat it regularly actually you have to clean and treat these more often than you do a normal air filter last can in air filter I had I used to do it every oil change and that's what you really should do clean and treat yeah yes. but this was probably half the problem because this is absolutely filthy and this actually had more stuff piled in it before we took it out because show. we tossed it and then remember we didn't film anything <laughs> show, yeah show the air show the air box yeah, yeah. Let, let people sit let's let's take a look at which i'm there. actually taking this off because i gotta do the clean mass airflow but uh yeah this is not the right air filter it's one i had that was similar oh yeah ain't that lovely <laughs> that's not supposed to be in there and this is actually a used air filter for another vehicle GM vehicle it doesn't have doesn't fit perfectly because this one's rounded but uh, you can see this was changed out as a used one how clean that is compared to that let's do a side by side yeah and this was changed on made regular maintenance see, this is the reason why I actually personally don't like Canon air filters they're a good company for racing engines and things like that but average Joe they see never change okay and they never open oh, bother to clean and there's the new one there there you go and like i said you can see the new one compared to the one that was changed on regular maintenance yep and this has just been kept as a backup because it wasn't too bad which i can't remember what we did with the box now <laughs> somewhere yeah we got some rags in there I'll, camera guy will wipe that out when he's doing something he'll yeah. wipe that out and other things i'm going to do is try to clean out the mass air we got a new mass air sensor because I think that's some of the issues it's having. But the original works better than anything new. We got not AC Delco parts. I went with a manufacturer that I have some, some knowledge of, some experience of being pretty decent. AC Delco has gotten difficult because once they quit manufacturing something for production, they lease out their name to anybody yeah. that makes a part that's similar in specs. And a lot of times you'll get a part with AC Delco marked on it and pay 150 bucks for it. And if you go buy the $30 part, set, put them side by side, they're the exact same part. This is the point where I'm kind of reminded of the Tommy Boy at the end, what Dan Aykroyd's playing. Yeah. All I want's the name on the box. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm going to clean out the screen, then I'm going to pull this and clean it. And this is this is actually a mass airflow cleaner. And you want to use that. Because sometimes cleaning them is all you really need to do. It's not malfunctioning outright. It hasn't died. So sometimes if they're still working, all it is is the sensor's gotten dirty. This thing has 125,000 miles on it. 200. So, 250,000 miles on it. Quarter of a million miles. I think it's kind of ironic. That's the magic number I keep saying, and then I buy a car with a quarter of a million miles. I think it's kind of ironic that I keep saying that in these videos. But we got another one just in case. If you notice, there is a strut bar here. Oh yeah, was. strut bar. It's a 15 millimeter and a 12 millimeter. Well, someone cross-threaded this. This thing was sitting loose. I tried to back it out and it sheared right off. So it's probably on the verge of shearing off anyways. We've also, they had stripped out screws. The threading's good, but we got replacement nuts. We're gonna try to use these. These are actually not stiff screws, but at the very least, we'll replace the one that's completely stripped. Yeah. And this is another sensor that I'm gonna clean best I can without removing it. Is that, uh, can the mass airflow sensor? That's not a mass airflow sensor. I'm not entirely sure what that sensor is. Oh, so can that cleaner do that? Oh yeah, this is a good electrical cleaner. It'll work with about any cleaner that's pretty sensitive. Um, you're better off getting this and using this to clean other components as opposed to getting just general electrical cleaner and using it on the, on the sensors. Because this stuff is set up, this stuff is made so it won't harm the sensors. Now, 
my question here is that after I spray that on there, can I just start the car right up or do I gotta wait or do I gotta uh, rinse it off? I would let it dry a little bit. Let it dry? Yeah, okay. I would let it dry. So do I have to rinse it off, get the water hose? No, don't need to rinse it, it'll just dry. Okay. There's huh. the sensor. Oops. And there and goes the screw. The screw. <laughs> I'll clean out the port, which is full of gunk. And clean the sensor. The Di see, the new ones have these covered. This one, you see the diodes outright, and they're not bad. This does not look too bad. Just it's just a couple of wires. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. This is a old, old one. <laughs> the new ones are closed. But that looks like it'll be fine. This was full of carbon. And that's probably going to be the biggest problem, other than I've got to find where the screws have gone to. I heard it. Ding and a tick. So yeah, hopefully it's that means, sitting there. Hopefully that means it's on the ground and not on the engine. Uh, while he's away, I'll go ahead and point something else out we discovered. When you're adding in brake fluid to this thing on these Riatas, you got to hit it 25 times with the ignition off before you actually check your brake fluid otherwise you may accidentally add too much brake fluid to it so we're gonna pull some brake fluid out now but some of the ideas we've been kicking around selling it I don't want to sell it um, getting a more updated 3800 engine because this is basically GM's 3800 engine v6 which is they hardly ever die Nowhere to be found. I found the packaging for one of them I've got three of them. Who knows where they are? Yeah. Where is it at? I'll see if I can't reach it with my thin it's, hands. It's right under this line. There we go. All right. I got it. You check this and check for brakes and that, that can make a difference too, but this actually looks pretty sound. Okay, so yeah. So the air, what is it, the air tube? That's the air feed, yeah. Air feed, throttle body, air cleaner. Yeah, there, there's words written on that. Cool. You realize? I just realized this thing was on backwards. <laughs> I don't think it matters, but it was on backwards. Oh, somebody's been working on it. Or tried to. See, there's the sensor that I'm trying to clean. And it should be just another airflow sensor. This is actually probably, this is probably the sensor that tells you altitude. Hmm. So it's probably what's feeding how much oxygen is in it. So it can adjust for altitude. Hmm. I'm not certain on that, but there's a good chance for that. So that's the uh, sensor you want to manipulate if you want to get more power output out of the engine. Probably. Uh, they might be performance ones on that to change what the air feed ratio is. It's, it's kind of weird on, on cars as they've aged where you had the early computers and the old computers. Some of the old ones had more sensors. Some of them have less sensors. They do different things. I guess we need to clean this out. We do. Yep. Now, I don't remember if you remember from last time, we wiped it out a little bit. This here is still on the list of things to fix. It's not great. And yeah, back door latch has been fixed. You know, there was nothing wrong with it. You just had to turn the key, push, and then it clicked closed. This is still broken though. It's on the list. Someone dumped oil in that filter while it was sitting in here, too, without taking it out. Oh, Lord. Yeah, the way you're supposed to do the K&N filters, you spray them down with the cleaner. You take the water hose. You rinse them off. You wait till they dry. You spray, oil down, you spray them down with oil. You wait till it dries. Then you put it in the car. You don't put it in wet. You don't try to spray it down with oil while it's wet, while it's in the car. I've, I've never seen an, an air intake box this oily, and I've worked on things that burn oil. Yeah. Isn't that most of the cars you've ever owned? Not most of them. Just a good portion of them. Yeah. And that, that's not me making fun of you, fun of Carl. That's. I own a lot of junk. Yeah, crazy Carl. There's a reason why we call him a junk mechanic. I... I I've honestly bought a lot of junkers and used them as daily drivers. Yeah. That's also the reason why we call him Crazy Carl. He prefers to buy a junker and use it as a daily rather than buying a regular car. Well, I've owned four new ones and the four new ones have given me trouble too, so what's the point?
Actually, the I think the least dependable thing I ever drove was a new Pontiac Sunfire. <laughs> <laughs> what year model? Uh, 04. That might explain it. <laughs> With a manual transmission that had third gear that worked when it felt like it. And this was a brand new. I drove it off the lot and the lights went out. I had no tail lights and no signals. They burn out on the drive home. Good lord. And uh, third gear, it used fluid. This is a manual. It used gear oil. So every 2,000 miles, you would lose third gear. Hmm. Take it to a dealership. They put more gear oil in it, send it back out. Without even checking to see where the leak was? Yeah. Well, it wasn't leaking. They couldn't find any sign of a leak. It was burning fluid. Oh, Lord. Yeah, that's sign of a good transmission oh, right yeah. there. So that was one of them actually stated that. Oh, it seems to be burning a little bit of fluid, but it's fine. We'll just keep topping it off. And I, that's not a solution. Mm hmm. I got rid of that. I actually traded it for cash and uh 89 mazda 929 that that thing was and this was in 2004 i lost money on that i lost quite a bit of money on that but that mazda i loved it i drove it until um the water pump seal failed and you had to pull the engine to change it hmm. so i traded it to a shop that had a mechanic for a 86 Chevy Scottsdale with a 305 V8 and half a million miles. I drove it for about another 20,000 miles so the transmission went out. Thanks to a farm job I was working, pulling a trailer with it. And it actually went, I traded it for a Wrangler and the dealership, their mechanic, one of their mechanics took it and uh, Took it home to teach his kid how to work on cars. It was his going to be his son's first vehicle, and they're doing a full rebuild on it, which I'm glad because it was a good truck. It was beat up and had a lot of miles, but it was still a good truck. And, and you know what? What? I said it's more rounded, and it is more rounded. But you know what filter they gave you? What? The same one we had in it. <laughs> I believe it. It. Uh, I said it fit. It fits. It's just not exactly the same. But I guess that's what you get now. More than but it fits and seals, so it's fine. Start the screws. Do not use your fingernails as screwdrivers. Don't do as I do. Fingernails are not screwdrivers. Even though I've done that in the past, I've broken many a fingernail that way. I'm just sitting them in there so they don't fall out again. Makes sense. Back it up a little bit so it's got a little bit of gap in there so it can continue breathalating and uh... breathalating. Yep. That's a word. You can do this and not have to worry about that much. Since I'm working on other stuff, I figured it's going to let it dry. Okay. And now I'm going to try to change this throttle position sensor. Now something we've already found, this is a vacuum line. This was pulled up like that. So this may be why the check engine light kept coming on. Take this line off to get that. Throttle position sensor is way down here. <laughs> so I've got to take the other end of that vacuum line off to get to it. And I need a pair of pliers. There we go. I got some pliers. Release the spring clip, pull it off of that, and then let's see if I can get this line to release. There we go. And it only helps a little bit, <laughs> but it helps a little bit. A little bit maybe all I need? I hope so. He said with hope in his voice? Uh, I'm going to have to get an angle screwdriver. And now, the joys are trying to do this at a weird angle. Yep. And if you're, this is your first time with this Riata, you're asking yourself, why the pole? Well, the strut's died. Yes, I have a strut, but the hinge needs repairing. I'm going to take it to a body shop and get the hinge repaired. Yeah, the hinge here is broken. Yep. The only type of welding I know how to do includes the initials J and B, and I don't think that'll hold it. No, and there's not really enough to weld there. I have a feeling we're probably going to have to get a new hinge. And yes, you could do that yourself, but it's a matter of time and i don't work quick enough for the cameraman <laughs> well here's where i say please like share and subscribe so we can get monetized for doing stuff like this and then we could do stuff like that on camera so we actually do have some really crazy projects planned for once we finally get monetization going
where I make enough ball jokes that Keeps agrees to sponsor us like he does, like they do all the other car YouTube channels. <laughs> that one was nice and loose. This one's really tight. <laughs> <laughs> Water line's good and flexible. You said the hard line's good and flexible? The water line. Water line. Is that a good thing or yeah. a bad thing? Okay. Yeah, if they're hard and brittle, that means they need replaced. This one's good and flexible, so it's probably been replaced. Hmm. I'm actually pretty sure it's been replaced because it's not, it's a fitted one. It's a flex one. Yeah. But this one should change sizes and it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> this is why on mine, I changed these to nuts. Makes After sense. I finally got the thing off. Makes sense. Because it was also at a weird angle, but not quite this angle, I don't think. And back to this. Got in. I got that cleaned up. So it's not so much for this. It's also a spacer on this, though. I think where this comes forward and meets is where the screws are supposed to line up. It works kind of as a washer as well. Which these have lock washers on them as well. And uh, normally I would use dielectric grease on this, but apparently I'm out. Luckily, the gasket on this is still really good still nice and soft and supple so it'll seal good soft and supple right here is your throttle control arm that's what feeds to this and when you're getting this on you want to make sure get that vacuum line out of the way that sits there so it lines up that way and then you take this plate I should have done that first. The plate will go here, and I think it's just going to be best to pull it down and hold it there. Did it first for demonstration purposes. Yeah. Which is just fun because there's all kinds of stuff in the way, and you need a third hand. That for that, and hold it. And you got to get the plate in there somehow. Most modern ones do not have the plate. This plate is old tech. See if I can do this, this, and use a screw in the back to try to hold on. Something you did in the 78 Jeep, if y'all were paying attention to that one. Yep, and I've got it back on. I'm just hoping I have it in the right position because it's adjustable. Get this vacuum line back on. There we go. Get that back on there. There we go. That's all on there, guys, and tight. So that should all be done. Now, we have the brake fluid to drain. Yeah. And then I'll put all this back together. And I guess it's time for me to pump, pump, pump it up. Oh, yeah. And that's, like I said, that's sheared off, so I get to drill that out and tap it and replace it later on. Yeah, that ain't going to be a today project. No. <laughs> I got too many other things I've got to do on this same day. This time of year, I have way too much to do and way too little time. Well, it ain't hitting the track anytime soon. <laughs> so Just trying to get it so you can drive it to get it tidal. Yes. Like I said before, got to pump the gas, to, or brake rather, at least 25 times. Waiting on him to pull that out so I don't splash brake fluid all over the engine. Because if I don't, I'm going to splash brake fluid all over the engine, and that ain't going to be fun. Doing brake fluid again. Back to my trusty basing syringe and my my bleeder setup. It's got a pleasant sound, like somebody in the urinal next to you is having urinary tract problems. Not urinary tract problems, just you really had to pee. Well, it could be, it just really had to be. Even the color of pee. Yep. I think someone has actually bled these brakes fairly recently because fluid doesn't look that bad. That's why y'all subscribe to us, because we give you high quality content. Like comparing brake break fluid to pee. All right, I'm going to pull one more, which is going to put it below the full level. But the point of that is, remember, now you get to go in there and pump the brakes 40 times. 25. 25. Well, it's your car. You get to do whatever. I'm going to film the uh, the jug. Alrighty. 
try not to get me on camera this time. I'll get you on, got you on camera, kick. Didn't move. So I think it's full. Is it at the full line? Or is it's it? at the full line. I'll add a little tiny bit back, but yeah, it's pretty well at the full line. You're on camera again. Give it back to you. All right, I'm just gonna add a little fluid back because it's a little below the full line, but not much. Okay. And there we go. It's at a little bit of an angle, so there we go. Perfect. Okay. All righty -oh. So maybe that'll solve the problem that the brakes get overpressurized. That could be. So on the on the trip back, the brakes were. Kind and of, look, kind of I fixed dragging. another issue. This isn't on backwards anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll do that after we try these bolts. All right. Have you figured out what size they are yet? No. The, the guy at the hardware store did for me. I didn't have to. And if you're wondering what a swivel extension is, that's what a swivel extension is. It lets you put it on there and you can get a little swivel on it. Which I need because it's at a little bit of an angle and it's just going to make it easier. I did put the air filter back in, didn't I? Yes, you did. Yep, it's in there. Alrighty. Let's move this back out of the way again. Really? Nothing in this car is at a, a flat plane, just so you know. No. Yeah, I know. It's aerodynamic. Everything's at a, a, a slant, so it cuts through the air. <laughs> we'll go with that. We will go with that. There we go. And these are 10 millimeter. And you don't want to over tighten, tighten these because it just breaks the plastic or strips the threads. That's just until tight. Not, not even good and tight, just until tight. That's the just uh, got out of that. Yeah. If you have a thumb one, that would be better. These, that's why they use screws for screwdrivers. You change them a lot. Plus, you don't want to tight over tighten. You just want them tight. I guess that's why back in the day, like your '78 Jeep's got that old air can. Yep, and you just have a wing nut. Uh, wing nut. Kind of hard to over tighten a wing nut. Tight. But we can find a way. That's tight. And technically you're supposed to do like you do on hubs on this. Just cross hatch. But you're not over tightening. You're just softly tightening them at that. Yeah. That way you have a good seal. Because you want a good seal. But you don't want to over tighten them. Once upon a time the screws were captured. The ones that were in here. Mm -hmm. And just trying to get them to feed through the top of that. So... I guess technically I wasn't supposed to be able to pull them out, but I did. Yeah, because it's stripped out. Basically with me, I'm using the pinky finger for strength, but I'm unusual. Yeah, that would be, we don't want to go, oh, please don't go over strength. I'm doing pinky finger at the neck on yeah. this thing. I'd, so. I'd hate to have to uh, go to the forum there and explain that you broke the air box. But see, it's just it's just good and tight, so they won't back out, and it makes a good seal. But it's not so tight. You're not getting to a torque strength on that. Hmm. And now let's get this back on, back the direction it's supposed to be, as opposed as backwards as it was. Oh, just what you missed. He put it back together. Oh, one weird, cool thing I thought. It has things on the line that holds the clamp. It's supposed to keep the clamp secure. The clamps were over these, which prevents it from actually making a good seal. I got them back where they're supposed to be. It makes this one a little aggravating to screw and unscrew with the screwdriver I was using. But it's a good spot. It's on there good and tight now. And generally this is, you can take that end off and that gets everything out of the way. More often yeah. than not, you're not going to be taking both ends off, you're just going to be taking that one. And then they have wiring that's in the way, as always. GM. And now you put this back on. Should have the bolt there, which is missing. But I'm just gonna have to do the one here for now. These are stabilizer bars. Actually reinforces the strut tower. Mm-hmm. So if I wanted to take it on the Autobahn, it would help. Helps stabilize. I 
I'm not gonna tighten this super tight, but tight enough so it's not rattling around. About as good as it's gonna get. Like I said, I'll have to tap and drill this in at some point. Just whenever you get to it, like I said, I'm just gonna be, be taking around the neighborhood every once in a blue moon. Yeah. And the, the fact that it's cross-threaded, I'm probably gonna have to drill it out, re-thread it. Yeah. Then get a new bolt. So yeah, that's gonna be a fun one. And you know what's really bad? What? I think I've got to buy a new drill bit because the one that's in my tap and drill set mm -hmm. that's that size is the one I broke. Mm. Of course. <laughs> but uh, if you want this to get the stuff out of the way, then you can start it up and see if your screen behaves. Here we go. All right. Sitting in Rita with me on the proper side of the camera. This is the side of the camera I belong on. Shouldn't have me cameras then. <laughs> Alrighty. So, as somebody once said, I got a great face for radio. Hey, look! It's not rolling! Good deal. Alrighty. And clear up there? Yep. yep. Okay then. Right again. It's, it's gonna give it a little gas. It's gonna suck some of that cleaner stuff in. Alright. Vehicle taking progress. No control problem detected. An electrical problem. Like I said, that could be that uh, ground that I saw the video on. But look at that. Screen is steady, no flicker. Well, it's flickering for you because camera. Huh? Gently go through the range of the throttle. Okay. Yeah. Tell me when to stop. Just keep going, just keep cycling through. You get, you get it up to 5,000 RPM, you stop. Green is not up. Oh, we got a test. Remember what I touched. Oh yeah. Adjust it. You gotta adjust the brightness. That's what you played with. It's on the far side. There we go. Eh? Eh? Now yeah, that's what I thought. It's GM for you. I have no idea why a bad throttle position messes up the radio, but it messes up the radios. So, therefore, if you have a Riata, like Race and Rita here, oh, and... Go to radio, and try to open the tape deck, eject. See the button eject, number one? It works! It even fixed that! You're welcome, I fixed your radio. Sweet. I may not replace the tape deck thing. Yeah, don't. It's 80s. It's got to have a tape deck. That's like having a, a, a nice car from the 70s, early 70s, and not having an A-track. We'll get to, some stuff to stick that. I, want, I just want a better trim piece. But yeah, we need some stuff to stick this, at least. But I think someone tried to fix that by pulling that apart instead of actually fixing what was wrong. Although I think someone tried it, like I said, it's been broken. I yeah. think someone got in there and tried to replace that throttle position sensor and then gave up because it's a pain in the rear. More than likely. But on these 3800s, they tend to be kind of a pain in the rear. All right, what did you learn today? Well, uh, throttle position sensor, uh, the cleaning the sensors, 
air intake, both of them. Like I said, this one has two. I think the second one actually reads the uh, oxygen levels. That re that should feed, that one probably reads the intake. So you'll need both of them. Um, checking the brake fluid. In fact, this one has a weird setup where you have to check it. And these to be removed. Mm -hmm. Which is, uh, that's gonna be a whole nother animal. And yeah, we need motor mounts. <laughs> yeah, the motor mounts need redone. It's just an 89. Yeah. So, stuff with age. The motor mounts probably need to change, change out. Um, this is what I was talking about with the old, this pushes the engine down in the impact. Yeah. This is what I was talking about using if you do a wooden car. Why you mention a wooden car? Why not? All right, so we have ideas we're kicking around. I don't want to reveal too much yet, but one of the things we're trying to do once we get monetized is hand build a wooden car and put like a 3800 engine in it or something. Nothing. We're going to do an American Morgan. Yeah. And if it's successful, we may or may not enter it in the Le Mans. The Lemons. Not Le Mans, that's... Oh, come on, it's Le Mans. It's, it's just lemon. another kind of Le Mans. It's lemon. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Great. Did Put you a little tick mark on it. And <laughs> did, you want, did you want to give them our blueprints after that? Uh, for what? I don't even have blueprints yet. All right, so yeah, we're, we're going to be doing like a Morgan-style car. It's going to have an American engine in it, 3800 probably in transmission. And yeah. It's going to be absolutely insane once we get monetized. Well, That's one of the things we're working for. 300 V8 something. It'll be front yeah. wheel drive. It'll we are going to do drive. a front wheel drive. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. We may even do V8 front wheel drive. It's just going to be whatever drivetrain we get that's good. Mm -hmm. And we'll work with it. And it should be pretty impressive because it should be pretty lightweight. Yeah. But before then, we're probably going to do another hand-built car. Oh, well, uh, that'd golf be a cart. that'd be a golf cart. Golf but cart. First run will be a golf cart for a trial. We'll yeah. have a we'll have a prototype. <laughs> <laughs> you can call it a prototype. <laughs> we'll have a prototype for the prototype. Yes. It's gonna be fugly. Y'all should stick around for that. If you know oh, I don't know. It might be really thing. nice. Yeah. And I'm leaning towards cedar. Okay. I'm done for for the body. Yeah. We definitely, we can, definitely, we can do cheaters. All right, well. Well, that's it for this one. Yeah. Uh, the gear rolls for another vehicle, so you should ignore that. <laughs> and again, if you have a Riata and you have that rolling screen, try the throttle position sensor first. Maybe that is the issue. That's any GM product with this 3800 for whatever reason it shares wiring with the radio systems so if your radio is doing screwy things on a gm with the 3800 or really any gm product and you have some weird stuff going on with your engine as well especially then try changing the throttle position sensor because yeah. it seems like that tends to straighten them up okay. and regular maintenance would be cleaning those sensors get get the proper cleaning Get the mass flow air sensor mass, cleaning. Yeah, mass air flow sensor cleaner, well, not the air box cleaner. Yeah. And clean those sensors every once in a while. That's just a service thing. Yeah. I read a can. That's all I know about. All right. All righty. Well, if you like this content, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you don't, if don't like it, share it with your enemies. Yeah. <laughs> and please all. subscribe. Yeah. After all, why should you do so for long? Thank you very much. Till next time. All right, y'all have a good one.